So our next mission is now that we know what a continuous, or excuse me, a frequency distribution for continuous data or discrete data that has a lot of values looks like, how do you make one yourself? I made this one for us that went from 35 to 45 and so on. So how do you make one um, and how do you decide how wide your classes are going to be? How do you decide where you're going to start? All of those things. So I have here um, instructions and we'll, we'll get into those in a second. But the following table shows the average points per game for all 14 men on the JCC basketball team in the 2011 to 2012 season as of 1-1-2012. One, one, so first of all, why is this data continuous? Um, the long and the short of it is there um, are a lot of decimal places to the data and there would be more if we just um, kept more. In other words, um, the data was were, sorry, data were rounded, I always get that wrong, but data is a plural noun. Data were rounded to three decimal places, but they could have had four, five, ten, etc. decimal places. In other words, the average number of points that a, that a player has is a continuous variable, right? So it not, not the number of points, the number of points they have in any one game is discrete. So in game one, it's 10 points, game two, it's eight points, game three, it's nine points, and so on. What what we're talking about is the average. Well, the average for the player over the season is going to be a continuous variable. It's got lots and lots of decimal places. Okay? Okay, so we're going to construct both a frequency and a relative frequency his, I mean, distribution below with the seven classes. And I have a feeling we're going to make um, histograms for that stuff later. We'll work on that in a minute. All right. So we're going to use the boxes above to determine the first class's lower class limit and the width. So the first class's lower class limit. Now remember the first class is going to be this class right here, this top row. So where do we start? Well, we start at either the smallest observation in the data set or a convenient number slightly lower than the smallest observation in the data set. Okay. So let's look here. Our lowest number, 8, 3, da, 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 it looks like it's 1. Cool. One seems like a good place to start. So I'll start at one. And if you want, you can go 1.000. All right. In general, you want to keep as many decimal places as your data has. And since our data is three decimal places, it won't hurt us to keep three decimal places. All right. Let me change my pagination. OK, I fixed my table a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Excel. And I'm going to go right here. OK, so we had the stats exams grades. And this was JCC basketball. This was actually games played, right? And now we're going to do a new one. And oh, I just kind of grabbed those here. Watch. If you grab a tab and just kind of hold down your left mouse button and move it over, see the little black arrow that's kind of moving left and right down there? That's just showing you where it's going to end up. So now it'll end up to the right of the stats exam grades. It doesn't have to. You can put it back. It's no big deal. I was just playing around with it. Now I wanted a new sheet, so I clicked down here on this little icon that gives me a new sheet. I'm going to name it um, Average Average Points. All right. And I'm actually going to just copy and paste in those numbers. Hold on. It occurs to me, I was pausing and doing this, but you might want to see this. So I copied and pasted them here. Now I copy, I go here, right click paste special. I'm going to go down to the paste special menu and I'm going to transpose. See that icon right down there? Click OK. And it flips them <laughs> so that way and I'm going to do it again. Copy, right click, paste special, paste special, transpose. And it switches them from being rows to being columns because I don't really want the column or the rows. And I'm going to call it average points per game. Okay, well, um, this is a small data set, so we could tell one was the smallest, but if you didn't know that, you click on the column. So go up here near the A and click, and it highlights the whole column. Go to Data and click A to Z, and it rearranges the data in order. So you can see who's the lowest and who's the highest real quick and easy. That helps if you have a really big data set. 